welcome back to Best Kept Secrets. I'm your host, Lele Pons, and I'm very excited about this week because it's all about one of my favorite subjects, true crime. I don't know about you, but I'm obsessed with crime stories. Every time I'm looking for a movie or TV show to watch, I'm always down to watch stories about murder and sort of like mystery stuff. My favorite that I've watched recently has been this eye for an eye that was really good that I saw. Uh, it's really, really intense. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. It's really intense. It's called Eye for an Eye. Then I've seen uh, The Unknown, which is really good. Those were my favorite that I've seen this week. Because I watch so many crime shows, I always imagine what it would be like to find yourself with a real life mystery to solve. In my head, I'd be fearless, detective, and in for the hunt, for the truth, and all that stuff. But to be honest, it's different when it happens to you in real life. I don't know how I would react. This is this is just me in my head in a movie. Um, most of us in reality would be a little bit more different. If I suddenly realized that someone I knew or that I worked with could be a possible, you know, murderer, uh, I'd be pretty nervous to actually turn them in. We never know if they're rich, if they can do something to you, if they have friends, you know, behind the closed doors and stuff. But what if you're wrong? Or what if that person you accused comes back to do revenge? The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. This week, we have two callers who each have an incredible story about crime. Brennan, who I'm going to talk to a little bit later, will tell us about the strange circumstances that led him to suspect his old employer of committing murder. But before that, let's talk to Vanessa, who was faced with a huge decision about whether or not to go to the police with her suspicion about a local crime. Let's give her a call and hear her story. Hi, Vanessa. What's up? Hi, Lele. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'm excited to ask you, what is your best kept secret? Tell us. Oh, geez. It's a big one. This is my first time telling, so Aww. I'm like nervous. <laughs> Amazing. Don't worry. We don't know who you are, and but you know who we are, and we don't judge. Perfect. So um, my secret a few years ago, um, it was like the summer going into my senior year of high school. I was at this bonfire party. Um, so the way bonfire parties work in our town, there's like some of our friends, some people from other schools, just other random people just kind of roaming and partying, having a good time. Um, so there was actually at the time, like a string of robberies, at the small businesses, um, in our town. So like our whole town was pretty much on edge and it was like, it was a really scary time just for our small town at the time. Um, so that's kind of some backstory, but we're all drinking, having a good time at this bonfire. And this one guy who I didn't really know very well, like kind of from afar, I think I'd seen him at other school games or whatever. Um, he's, everyone's kind of drunk. He comes up to me and he starts telling me about this dream that he has. Um, and he's telling me about how he went to this, uh, ice cream shop and he broke in with a brick and he was like, talking, laughing about how he was eating all this ice cream and then how he like broke into the safe, stole five grand, like kind of flexing that it was oh, like, wow. and so I was like, this is not an appropriate joke to make with everything going on. And he's like, oh, it's not a joke. It was my dream. But I was like, I think he's drunk confessing to me. Like, what is this? And so I was even a little iffy with the details. I had a couple of drinks, but I woke up the next day and I'm like, was I drinking? Was I drunk? I went through some like Snapchat memories. I like saw selfies of us. And I'm like, okay. So at some time in the night, we were together. So it had to, like, it, this didn't come from nowhere. Like, I, I'm really sure that he drunk confessed to me. Um, and of course, there were no robberies that night at the, um, the night that we had the party. And um, I mean, it was almost funny just like knowing who it was behind the scenes. Because I'm like, this guy doesn't look like he'd hurt anyone. All the robberies, they were like at night, just like breaking in and stuff so no one was like hurt no armed robberies or anything but it was still like really scary and I'm like just because I know it isn't like you know the rest of the town is pretty on edge so I waited a couple of days because I'm like sitting on this like it's really stressful um lot to handle um and then the next robbery though that happened was actually one of my good friend's parents Italian restaurants and so then I was like okay like this just got personal you know if it wasn't before now it's a big deal so I'm like, oh, hell no. So I went to the cops, 
took my butt to the police station um, to turn him in, basically. And I went all confident, like, screw this guy. He stole from my friends, parents, blah, blah, blah. Um, but of course, as soon as I start walking up, I'm literally shaking because I'm like 16, 17. I've never confessed to police about anything. So I'm terrified at this point. Um, but I end up kind of telling them, I'm like, Okay, he said it was a dream, but this is what he told me. Um, and they didn't really release any information, but he was arrested the next day. Um, and basically, the details that I gave matched up perfectly with that specific ice cream shop. Oh, wow. Video. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. And I didn't tell anyone. My parents, my best friends. Nobody heard him tell you at all? No. I mean, as far as I knew, no. I mean, everyone was pretty, pretty buzzing, like from drinks and stuff. So no one else heard. It was just us two. And he was like, just kind of trying to be funny about this dream. And I'm like, this is not the right time to make jokes about like robbing literally ice cream stores. So it was just me. Did they find proof that it was really him? Yeah. Yeah. So like the story that I gave completely lined up with exact like everything from he broke the window with a brick to he was eating ice cream to he stole five grand from the safe like every single detail lined up I guess they found that um oh wow that like the, I, there was ice cream eaten like and again they didn't tell me these details when I was telling them but they obviously were listening like okay this is oh wow yeah you know you saved something you 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 did great thank you I know it like it feels good but like it's still scary because like he's he's literally in jail <laughs> like I like someone is in jail because of me and do you feel guilty though i don't think you shouldn't feel guilty yeah not not guilty i'm like happy that i was able to like put that whole situation to rest like our whole town like in my head i'm like oh, i'm a town hero but like no one else knows that you know so you never told anybody that you were the one who reported him yeah i have never told anyone like to this day what do you think people will say if they found out I mean, I think now being a couple years removed, it could be kind of a cool, maybe funny story. But um, at the time, though, there was way too much like tension in our town. Like everyone was really scared and on edge. So a couple years from now, I'll I'll kind of like maybe tell some people, but that that day hasn't come yet for me. So, uh, how long will he be in jail for? Yeah, so he was sentenced to 15 years. 15? Yeah, the fact that, like, it, none of them were armed, but the fact that it was multiple, he, he broke into a lot of places. Like, it was a month-long thing, and may, sometimes, like, it'd be a once a week, um, he'd break in, sometimes twice a week, sometimes there was, like, he broke into a lot of places. He's so stupid for telling you. No offense. Yes. I know, I know. So dumb. And, like, doesn't matter. He, he had to have been, like, crazy drunk to even just, like, talk about it, like, I don't know. And yeah, yeah. super dumb. <laughs> Did this make you want to get into solving more crimes? You know, to be honest, I would say that's a good question because I always like the crime shows and stuff. Those have always. Oh, you like crime shows? I love crime shows. CSI is like my all time, one of my all time favorite TV shows. Pretty Little Liars, all that has been like some of my favorite shows. Um, so honestly, when I was going through this, I felt very like pretty little liars i was like i'm going to the police station like this guy just told me about this like i just feel like kind of kind of badass in the moment um but i think when it boils down to it i'm also a scaredy cat <laughs> like the fact that i haven't even told anyone i'm just like it'd be cool to be a part of it but when it comes to like actual crimes like i get a little scared you never know maybe after this you you feel more confident and more 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 open to tell people after telling me no that's true you know and you're and you were a hero yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you were. I feel confident telling that story. That's the first time I've ever said that story out loud. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong for with telling that story. Maybe, you know what? Maybe just only the people that are close to you, just in case when he comes out. So he doesn't for find sure. out. Yeah. 100%. Well, I, I, agree. I, I wish you good luck. I wish you the best. I hope that you actually uh, start doing some crime stuff. Like, Yeah, thank you. I'll definitely consider that. I'll look into some like criminal justice or something. It's definitely interesting to do me. It. So. Do it. And then yeah. if they're asking you, like, have you worked on anything like that? You can be like, actually, I'm the one that did this and this and this. That's your portfolio. Right. Right. <laughs> yep. I'm already I'm already working on that. <laughs> That's funny. OK, well, thank you so much for sharing. This is amazing. And if uh, you find another crime, come back to us. Of course. Uh, you'll be my first call. Probably my only one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Well, guys, we were talking to a hero. I mean, seriously, you ha you have no idea how many times police and everybody tries to find the like the guilty person, 
but it takes someone so simple. It's always at the end the the person that's like simple and everything and like the the like that finds the guy. Like a random person in a village is like, "Hey, I think this guy's like suspicious and everything." The guy is either such an idiot to tell someone like that or maybe he maybe he had a guilty conscience and wanted to talk about it. You never know. But this was uh this was intense. That's amazing for her. I don't know why she would keep it a secret from like someone that she trusts. It's kind of cool to say she didn't do anything wrong. In fact, she should brag about this. This is like insane, you know? But I don't know, maybe she's worried that, you know, people will think she's a like, you know, tattletale or anything like that, but I don't think that's the case. I mean, she did something good. I'm proud of her, and I don't even know her. Holy shit, I, um, that was a good story. I, I can't wait to hear the next one. But before that, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to be right back. All right, guys, we're back and we are going to be talking to Brandon right now. All right, so let's give him a call. Let's go right in. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Lily. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So tell us, why are you here today? What is your best kept secret? So, long story short, I used to work as a home care aide. So I would take care of like older people that need like, help and you know wheelchair stuff. They can't okay. move on by themselves. And the people that I got hired by were these, I mean, insanely rich. Like the wife came from like really old aristocrats in like Europe. The husband had this crazy job working for like the U.S. government and stuff. Like this cr- like crazy, crazy money they had you know, multiple houses, millions of dollars, like more money than I could ever even think about. And I worked with him for a couple of years. I'll be taking care of this man or whatever. And, and he, he was rich. Was, he was really rich. This guy. He was very rich. Like, I, I mean, like more rich than I could think of. And so um, I would be taking care of him and he would start getting, you know, sick because he's old. Like he was like 90 something. And I would be giving him all his medications. That was part of my job to make sure he took his like liver and anti-seizure medications, all the things I needed to keep him alive. So, after I noticed he started getting a little more sick, I noticed his wife started um, moving around a lot of their assets in terms of like property, cars, this. Like she would ask me to move some things from one house to the next, like very like sporadically. And I was getting suspicious. And um, she, all of a sudden, I would come over to take care of the man, and he would like have a lot less of his medications, like the ones that he would really, really need. And I would ask her, like, are you sure? Like, he doesn't need you anymore. Like, these are very serious medications to take him off of. And she'd be like, yeah, no, 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 he's fine, he's fine. Like, try to play it off. Like, he's fine. And of course, I would trust her because she's the wife. How old was the wife? The wife, uh, 70, like, two or three, and the man's, like, 90-something, like, 94, 95. So she's, like, 20 years younger than him. Um, but this is the craziest part of their, like, thing. And I found out about, you know, talking to the daughter that the old man, like the man that I was taking care of, he had this like kind of like almost insurance policy from his old job. And basically the insurance policy comes with um, a personal driver, a company car, um, a personal assistant, and then five hundred and fifty to six hundred thousand dollars. So like almost half an over half a million dollars every single month. Like literally every a month he would get over yes, a month. So like every year they would probably make like 12 to like 17 million dollars in retirement money that's his retirement money that's how much money they had his yeah it's his oh wow and and so but here's the thing so i'm snooping and blah 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 blah, and the wife starts having their like legal people over all the time like she like i would be you know cooking the old man's food she would come and be like oh you have to leave right now you have to leave like the lawyers are coming over you must leave and i was like okay that's weird very weird so i was getting suspicious i found out that she that was she found out reading through his lawyers that his policy doesn't last until he dies, but it lasts until she dies because she's married to him. So technically she does not need to have him around to get all of his benefits. And so next thing you know, within like two or three months, she starts taking him off all his medication. I don't take him to any more physical therapy anymore, like if it's health things, whatever. And then she kind of like fires me. And then I found out from her daughter that a month later, the man died. Oh, it's for sure she did it. I'm like, I'm sitting here, like looking back at it, like she was spending probably thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, you know, a week to keep him alive with all the things that she had to pay for and blah, blah, blah. Like she had servants on, 
you know, cooks and chefs and dog walkers, everything. She fired everybody, drowned all his money, took him off all his medications, and she just had the lawyers come over and like re-sign all of his stuff to her name. And then, in my opinion, she killed her husband. Obviously, I have no way to prove it with hard proof, but... You should have gone to the police and been like, this is... If you want to know how this guy died, you should have uh, do some research about this. And like, I was really thinking about that. But the, um, these people, they're from New York. Like, they're old, and they have, like, friends that are, like, in the Supreme Court and stuff. Like, they have big, big lawyers. They have, like, huge money to build. So I was, like, kind of scared to try to... Yeah, try scary. to come for her but i really i know she did it because she doesn't even talk to her daughter anymore her daughter doesn't talk to them anymore because i think she knows what happened to her dad did they fight a lot yes they did like the daughter was like my mom is definitely like money hungry she never worked a day in her life my mom was just like you know some rich greedy woman blah 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 but he he shouldn't have given her the money then well that's the thing the old man he was kind of like he was not in the best condition and he it took a lot of prayer to keep him alive basically and so she was like, yeah, once you realize that she doesn't need him there to make that $550,000 a month, she was like, oh, bet. Wow. And how do you know that uh, that it was by not taking the medicine? Was that the reason why he died? Well, you had to take um, like and like um, uh, medicine to not clot his blood for his liver, um, anti-seizure medication, anti-stroke medication. Um, he had like also diabetes and Alzheimer's. And so basically like, to take him off all of that will back up his body with like toxins, like, oh, you know, yeah. his kidney uh, will start to fail. And like, literally you could see him. Cause I would go back to visit him every time when he had the medication and he looked sick, like there's more liver spots. He's like shaking. He could barely like, he could barely be awake. So he, he was in pain. He was very in pain. I would ask her, I'm like, can I take care of him? Can I give him something? She's like, no, 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 he's fine. He's fine. Just leave him. And I would be so concerned because I'm like, are you paying me to take care of your husband? Like, is that what I'm being paid here to do? Wait, so when he got his medicine, did he feel better? Obviously, right? Yeah, because the, the the thing was like, without them, basically, like if he doesn't take them for too long, you can tell that he gets sick because like his eyes will get yellow and like hazy. Um, his skin will turn a little bit more purple and like sickly colored. He looks like he's starting to like honestly like rot. He looks like he's starting to rot, and basically all these medicines just keep him from like dying like it was to clear his liver to clear his blood like he started peeing blood and stuff when he took him off off the medication and i was like i was like hey your husband's peeing blood like is this okay and she was like oh like that's just a side effect of this like he'll be all right with whatever and i was like mm, something in my gut doesn't sit right with this but i was like who am i to really question your authority because you're his wife thinking that she has his best interests for him wow do you think that maybe he wanted his wife to do that because he didn't want to live like that anymore, even on the medicine? I don't think so. He was he. The thing about this man is that he, um, like he's a very intelligent man. Even in his later years, he's very bright. He's very smart. He like he's very sharp when he's there. So he's very like aware of what's going on. And his wife, like he's worked his entire life. He's had jobs. He's made the jobs. His wife hasn't though. She has never worked. And I feel like she was trying to, like, dumb him down so he wouldn't be aware of what she was doing to him. Did you say anything about finding the medicine hidden in, in the drawer to the wife? Did the wife ever tell you anything? That's how I noticed that he first started getting put off his medications because she would usually have them all laid out by his um, by his kitchen and, like, by his breakfast table. And so I'd be serving him with breakfast. And then later, as I'm going through his, um, like, just, like, snooping through this stuff because... I was like, you know, concerned. I find that in the back of, they have a shared dresser because their bedroom is shared. In the shared like dresser, underneath like clothes and towels, I find like a bunch of prescription refills for the medication that he's supposed to be on because it gets delivered to the house every week. And it's all what? just being stashed away. Like every week we'd have like, you know, That's crazy. six to eight pills being delivered. And, and all these freshly full medicines are just being hidden away. And I was like, why don't you just flush them? I don't know why she's keeping them, but they were just stacked, like, away. And I was like, at this point, it's too late to give them to them. Well, that's crazy. I'm with you. It, it sounds like she was up to that, like, up to bad things, but I guess there really is no way to ever know. But it's for, like, it's, like, obvious. It's so obvious. If you're there, like, you see, it all sees her, like, a woman who's never worked, an easy, well, easy, what, $600,000 a month just to not have a husband anymore. I'm so sorry. Like the mask there. And, and that's the thing. She was never, she was never that sweet of a woman ever. 
Were you were you scared to tell anybody else or like because you thought you know like they were powerful and like you didn't want to get in trouble? Oh, extremely! I was so afraid because like you know just from working with them for two years, I saw how quickly she could like flex her like power to get what she wanted. Like you know back when like things were kind of crazy, she wanted to have she wanted to have like a private um music like opera concert or something for herself. So she rented out all of like the like hall, which is this crazy big opera house. She just rented it out like that because she knew somebody. Like she always knows somebody somewhere. And I was like, I don't know, messing with somebody that's rich. What the like fuck? she'll bury me. She'll bury me with her husband. I knew it. Do you feel guilty for not saying anything? Like I do honestly because like he was a really sweet man, and his daughter was heartbroken when he died. Though I wonder where his daughter was this whole time. The daughter lived maybe like 10 minutes from us in New York. Like she was you know, around the corner or whatever. But um, she herself has a couple of health issues. So she was like really worrying about herself and like taking care of herself at the moment. So like, she, I think she knows her mom. Doesn't she want to like, you know, get her mom in, like, in jail or something? Like, she, I mean, she could try. But the thing is, though, like the mom has all the money. Like every time those grandkids would come over and those grandkids were like, five, six, seven years old, like three little, little kids. She would give each of those kids $10,000 in cash every time she saw them because she told me the reason why she gives them that is because if she takes out more than that, then the I- she has to report it to the IRS. So she's like, oh, I'm not reporting the money to the IRS, so I'm just going to give all $10,000. It's fucking kind of crazy, stuff. bro. Super rich people are really She's crazy. like shelling out money for no... I'm like, what does, an, what does a five-year-old need ten grand for? Does she ever give you money? I mean, she would, she would like pay me like well enough for like the job because I was like I was like oh you know like considering the work I did and like you know the kind of money they had I was like oh I'm being paid fairly I feel like I'm being paid nicely but then towards the end she would like she would come home early from like way earlier than I would expect her to with lawyers and she would just pay me like you know six hundred dollars just to leave she like just she like I'll give you six hundred dollars just to, like go home right now hush money literally kind of like hush money and I was confused but she would always be like oh you work she would be like you work so hard blah 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 I need you to throw me out here's extra money as well and I would wow. never really question it until he died and then I was like oh my god I took the hush money I'm so sorry about that this is this is a big like thing like for you like this is like a huge i like i travel with them i like i remember i would fly like to their other houses like they would go to europe sometimes like they were like really rich and like you know i would travel everywhere with them like they had a yacht and stuff and blah 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 blah, blah. And, you know all that and then once you realize she doesn't need him around she was like that okay because i would see like during because when i first started working for them when I saw how many, how much staff she had to take care of this man, I was like, oh, you must really love your husband, huh? But then I realized it's because she thought she had to to keep all that money coming in. But that's fucked up. I'm sorry. But I am with you. Right? Isn't that and sad? the girl is with you, too. The daughter, you know? It's just... And yeah. I, I bet the other people who are, who are working there are with you, too. This girl's a murderer. Right. You know, at least you cared about him. Right. So be happy with that. <laughs> right. That's a lot to take in. I'm like, you want to hear about a multi-millionaire killer? I got one. But it's honestly not your biggest, best-kept secret. Mm-mm. It's hers. It's true. You know, like, imagine she comes in here and tells me what she did. I'd probably be like, fuck, get out of here. I don't think she would ever admit that to a soul. I don't think she even admitted it to herself yet. But thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for telling us this. Of this course. is really helpful for for like the show. Oh my god, this is a great story. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me, Lele. Stay safe, Lele, all right? You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye bye. It's crazy what money can do. Seriously. Like it's so stupid. And plus, like if you think about it, yeah, she's seventy four or something. That's still 20 years younger. Like, I wonder if he, she met him when, like, she was 15 and he was just, like, 35. You know, like, I don't I don't know when they met. I don't know their story, but they did fight a lot. She sounds like a, a, a woman that she wanted money. And the daughter, I feel so bad for the daughter. That's fucked up for her, too. I wonder if she can, like, fight for that. Like, the daughter should have money as well from the dad. She should. She's getting it from the mom, but... That's hard. I feel really bad. And, and it's really sad because the, the man probably died in pain. I hate to say it, but like the way that, that the medications helped him and the way that when he didn't take it, how he looked. I'm sorry. That's, that's for me the saddest part is how he died. And to be honest, I probably would have done what he did because people like this are so scary. They're so powerful, sadly, you know, and they probably have so many connections and she can go wrong if you mess with them so and she looked like she well she sounded like a scary person so i don't know better to stay away from this and you know but i would be traumatized hey 
Thank you so much to Brandon and Vanessa for sharing their stories with us. That took some guts. You know, you never know who's listening. Vanessa said that she'd never told anybody that story before, so I'm glad that she chose us to tell. We're the first ones, guys. I feel so special. Of course, I understand why she's so nervous right now because it must have been a terrifying situation that she found herself in when she realized that the guy really had drunkenly confessed to her. I mean, the fuck is going on? I mean, I can't imagine how fast her heart must have been beating on the way to the police station. I'm proud of her for going through with it, but uh, I think she did the right thing. I think the guy was either super dumb for telling her or he had a guilty conscience and just needed to tell somebody. I think it's the second one. Even if he was pretending it was a dream. Yeah, okay, cool. He's in prison for 15 years now, and I think Vanessa should remember that it's his repetitive thefts that put him there, not her. You know, she just helped. I mean, it's a criminal. And speaking of being put in a difficult situation, my heart goes out to Brendan. I really don't know what I'd do if, you know, I was in his position. It really seems like he really cared for the man he was looking after. And obviously he has a lot of suspicion about the way he died. It really sounds like his wife may have killed. I think the wife killed him for sure, for money or whatever. But I feel so bad for him because I can tell that he really had a great bond with him. And I also feel bad for this daughter as well. And for me, the saddest part of the whole story was realizing that the man probably died in a lot of pain because his wife you know didn't give him the medicine he needed it's crazy what people will do for money i mean i love to encourage brandon to do what vanessa did and go to the police with his suspicions but at the same time the person he's accusing is so rich and well connected that i know something scary would happen if that was the case she's not gonna go down without a fight I just went online and found out that there are ways to tell the police information that keeps you anonymously, though. So maybe that's one thing that Brandon could do so that it doesn't come back to him. But I don't think so, because he really does. It's either him or the daughter. One of them. This week's show has given me a lot to think about. So I want to ask you guys one thing. Would you report someone you know to the police if you thought they would committed a crime? I like to think I would, but... You never know. This is a very hard question. So I want to know what you guys think and what your answers would be. Let me know what you would do by voting on the poll on my Instagram at Lelepons. That's our show for today. Stay out of trouble this week and meet me back here next Wednesday for some more best kept secrets. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebodge. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week.